This week, Shadow announced some of the big things they have planned for the first quarter of 2021, and I would be remiss as YouTube's Shadow Guy if I didn't lovingly take your hand and walk you through some of the details. Come, walk with me. So the first thing announced in the live stream was for Shadow to support the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X controllers by February. Now, if you follow my cloud gaming news, you might remember me talking about this in a previous changelog in December, so how can they support them even more? So as it turns out, yes, you can use your PS5 and Xbox Series X controllers on Shadow today. However, they are currently recognized and interpreted by Shadow as Xbox 360 controllers. So this additional change will allow your Shadow to recognize the controllers for the true marks of engineering genius that they are, show them up correctly in the quick menu, and won't have to remap any of the buttons. Next, something coming in the next few weeks, something that's going to make my life a hell of a lot easier, we have dynamic shutdown. Anyone who uses Shadow frequently will know since the start of the pandemic, Shadow have implemented an automatic shutdown after 30 minutes of inactivity. This is done to ensure the best performance for people who, you know, are actually using their machines. <laughs> and it ensures available resources for more people trying to log in. Let me in. Let me in. But in fairness, sometimes your boy just needs a snack. So dynamic shutdown will essentially look at the traffic in your data center and determine if it needs to log you out after 30 minutes because of high demand, or maybe it's 3 a.m. on a Tuesday and all of the normies are in bed, so that time would be raised to an hour before logging you off, which just means even more time for snacking. Next on the list, there will be an update to USB over IP. This is a tool that allows your shadow machine miles and miles away to identify a USB peripheral that you have plugged into your local machine. What we've been advised is this is being updated to a newer version which will improve the performance, but we'll have to wait to see what the real world impact of this actually is. A big one for example is people wanting to connect their webcam to shadow to use their virtual machine for live streaming, in this example, most people are blocked by local upload speeds, but for those who have fantastic internet, USB over IP could be a contributing factor to potentially bad performance. The next one is for my mobile Shadow users. Within the next few months, both the Android and iOS Shadow applications will be getting updates, which will add the ability to pass through your microphone and introduces the dynamic bitrate feature received previously on the desktop applications. As we talked about before, this adjusts your bitrate on the fly to compensate for any sudden changes in network quality, something which is especially important if you're connected over Wi-Fi or even brave enough to use mobile data. Next, for my fellow VR advocates, further progress will be made on Shadow's in-house VR streaming application for the Oculus Quest in Q1. This app is already available in an alpha state, and I'll leave the details in the description down below if you wanted to give it a test in its current state. Previously, it was only supported for the Quest 1, but I'm sure all of the people who got a Quest 2 for Christmas will be pleased to hear it is also available in an alpha state for the Quest 2. Improvements will continue to roll out this quarter to improve latency and reliability, as Shadow's new CTO, JB, stated in its current alpha state, it doesn't quite yet mirror the performance of something more established like a virtual desktop. The goal for Q1 will be to get Shadow VR to a point where it can go from an alpha to a beta state. Now, although the update was specific to Q1, we did get some details of some larger features and functionality which we can expect to see, although these may be seen later in 2021. The first one I'm super excited about is upscaling. This is similar to NVIDIA's DLSS or the AI upscaling used on the NVIDIA Shield Pro. Shadow are currently working on a similar algorithm which would allow you to set your stream quality to something like 720 and upscale to 1080 or even 4K. As all of the calculation and upscaling is happening on the client side, it frees up your bandwidth as if you were just streaming a crappy 720p video but actually enjoying a crisp, tasty, delicious full HD gameplay. This is an absolutely massive win for those with below average internet who currently have to choose between quality or performance. In 2021, Shadow is saying, why not both? But what about if you already have great internet and are already streaming at 4K? Well, then the upscaling feature will further improve your latency, giving you better performance or leading nicely into the next big piece of news would allow you to, I don't know, maybe double your screen space without doubling your bandwidth. Yes, in the next few weeks, dual screen functionality will be rolled out to the alpha versions of the Shadow, Windows, and Mac clients, 
and possibly Linux. With this one, the more people who try out the alpha versions and provide feedback to Shadow, the quicker it will get released for realsies, and we'll all have to start justifying the purchase of that second monitor. Look at him, he's lonely. He needs a friend. Back to functionality being released very soon. By next week, the Shadow application will be supported in beta for Chromebook users. Chromebooks have grown massively in popularity as they are true low-powered streaming workhorses, which makes them a perfect candidate for Shadow. So it's great to see them overcoming previous issues with Chrome OS and officially supporting it. Just to note, Shadow has tested this on most Chromebooks, but not all. But the general idea is as long as your Chromebook supports Android apps, it will be able to run Shadow. Which is a nice segue into the next development with some Chromebooks running uh, ARM-based processors. Within the next few weeks, an alpha version of Shadow will be released, which will support machines running ARM-based processors like the new MacBooks running the M1 ARM processors. Of course, although they like to think so, Apple didn't revolutionize ARM processors. One of the biggest uses for ARM-based technology is something like the Raspberry Pi. I know a few people on the Shadow Reddit have tried to get Shadow to run on the Pi with varying results, but further development in this area would make it possible. This is great news for anyone who's been trying and failing to get their hands on a Shadow Ghost, because now it would just be so much cheaper and simpler to grab a Raspberry Pi, build your own. To that point, I believe Shadow will be running a competition at some point for the most creative builds, so inventive people with access to things like 3D printers will be able to do some pretty crazy things. Oh wait, that's me. No definitive dates have been announced yet for when the Pi would be officially supported, but of course I'll keep you updated with everything we learn here on the channel, so be sure you are subscribed with those notifications turned on. Next one I'm super excited about. Another development a little bit further off in the distance is the ability to run your Shadow instance in the browser. So this currently exists as a proof of concept, and development will continue in 2021, but this would essentially allow you to access your Shadow machine on almost any device with a browser without the need to install a client. Now, I'm not encouraging you to play games at school or work, but just put it out there. This one blows the doors wide open for the different devices you could run Shadow on without sideloading applications like the Chromecast, Amazon Fire Stick, or even smart TVs. Now, in terms of actual hardware and the tier configurations, you'll be aware most people are still currently waiting for the Ultra and Infinite tiers. However, in their live stream, it was noted that Shadow are aware of the current CPU limitations on the current tiers, and it is something that they are actively looking to upgrade. However, logistically, the times between choosing a new component and having it installed in all of the data centers, it's hard to gauge a time frame on this. But again, of course, any updates we receive, I'll be sure to let you know here on the channel. So we have some very exciting things coming our way this year with a lot of these developments landing in just the first quarter of 2021, which honestly has me super excited about what else we could get throughout the rest of the year. So what new feature are you most excited and what else would you like to see in 2021? Let me know in those comments down below. And of course, if you haven't already signed up to Shadow, there's some big stuff coming. Uh, now's the perfect opportunity. As always, there is a link in the description down below, which will get you 5% off your first month subscription. But of course, if you enjoyed this video, you found the roundup of Shadow news helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next video. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.